have Indonesia Tsuji volunteers inspire Manado residents in North Sulawesi to continue the cycle of love. We go to the Qilan Forest Recreation Area in Yilan, Taiwan to learn more about the foremost in Cyprus. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Helen Now Thank you for joining us. First up in Indonesia, following the severe flooding in mid-January, Tsuji volunteers arrived in Manado, the capital city of North Sulawesi, to survey the disaster and carry out relief assistance. Inspired by volunteers' selfless dedication, local residents donated their filled bamboo coin banks to continue the cycle of love. With tools in hand, today Manado's Tikala Baru is full of life and energy as volunteers and residents add some colour to the village office. <laughs> Able to serve their own community, villagers work with enthusiasm. Even residents from the neighbouring village came to help out. <laughs> I will do what I can to help. Seeing that city volunteers come all the way from Jakarta to help us, as a resident of Manado, I should do something to help as well. Although it's tiring, I am happy nevertheless. Although Manado suffered extensively after the flooding, this disaster, however, has illuminated the goodness of people helping one another in times of need. One example is Tikalabaru resident, Charlotte, who brought a coin bank to help. This bamboo coin bank was given to me previously by the volunteers. I saved up some change each day to donate to the coin bank. When other disasters occur, the volunteers can use it to help others. A flood survivor herself, Charlotte, who is a devoted Catholic, was moved by the volunteers' ceaseless support to give what she could. Tsuji volunteers taught us that small change can do great deeds. I was moved and inspired to be more like the volunteers. This is also a way for us to show others how something small can accumulate into something great. The love of the volunteers has not only helped with the recovery of the city, but also brought hope for a better and brighter future. In Manila at the Philippines, a fire broke out in Bagong Barrio on February 24th, leaving hundreds of families affected. To help them through this difficult time, city volunteers arrived with much needed aid supplies. Fire destroyed the homes of hundreds of residents of the Bangko Barrio community here in Manila. Survivors are in shock following the devastation as they wonder how to rebuild. Upon learning the news, city volunteers bring relief items for the victims. Later volunteers also take a chance to encourage the participants to adopt bamboo coin banks. When you give a little of your love to help the needy, they will pay the love forward and help those in greater need. Due to the fire, Rowena's family of seven is in desperate straits. However, Tsuji's support has given them hope to carry on. These aid supplies are truly helpful for my children, especially now that my husband cannot find a job. I am the sole breadwinner of my family now. Thanks to the volunteers' timely assistance, the fire survivors will soon be able to return their lives to normal. In 2004, following the devastating South Asian tsunami, city volunteers traveled to the hot-hit area of Hamban Tota, Sri Lanka to help. Since then, volunteers have nurtured a group of local and medical volunteers. In June of last year, the Sri Lanka Tima started conducting Ayurveda free clinics. Following the success of their first aid clinics, medical volunteers have been encouraged to hold free clinics in other remote regions to help those in greater need. The venue for Tsuji's free clinic in Sri Lanka's Hampantota has just been set up, yet the patient queue is already full. This is the third time 61-year-old Suliba has received treatment for her knee pain and she feels she has recovered 80%. I'm happy that my leg has recovered. Previously, my knee hurt so badly I could not even leave my house. Now I can even go to work. In Sri Lanka, one finds this type of traditional treatment called Ayurveda which originates from ancient Indian medicinal practices and emphasizes a holistic approach to healing using herbs, massage and heat treatments. 
Man Kamati, season tsunami bagi the residents here are poor, and the tsunami that hit Hamman Toda worsened their economic position. Zizi's free clinic offers residents free treatments to allow them to save their money for other necessities. Since June of 2013, Sri Lanka's team of members have conducted many free clinics like this one in Hambantota, which have encouraged Dr. Suga and the rest of the medical volunteers to continue with such services in the future. I want to develop this Ayurveda clinic. I want to further develop these Ayurveda free clinics, not only in this area, but also in the more remote areas of Hambantota, to help the poor and those unable to pay for such treatments. This is a great clinic. No matter if it's treatment or prescriptions, everything is free of charge. It's a blessing for the poor. Siji's free clinics have established a good reputation in Hambantota. And for those seniors, suffering from aches and pains, they have not only found a solution to their problems, but also a reason to smile again. In our next report, we join city volunteers in Montreal, Canada, in China, Shenzhen and Dongguan at their blessing ceremonies, in which members of the community and care recipients were invited to celebrate the arrival of spring. But first, let's join the New Year's blessing ceremony in Haiti, where city volunteers not only handed out blessing and wisdom red envelopes, but it also encouraged participants to adopt these bamboo coin banks to cultivate more blessings. This is the fourth year Tsuji is holding a blessing ceremony at this Catholic church in Port-au-Prince. For the event, duty started at 2 in the afternoon. By 1.30, the church was already packed. Volunteers prepared 95 coin banks made from PET bottles and encouraged participants to adopt one and become a catalyst for positive change. A representative from the Boy Scouts also gifted City with a souvenir made from recycled materials. A blessing ceremony was also held at a local church in Capetian, in which 400 residents came to take part, receiving the blessing and wisdom red envelopes from the volunteers. This love from Taiwan has once more brought hearts closer together. The recycling station is filled with festive atmosphere as city volunteers put on traditional gowns and extend their New Year's blessings to participants. With the construction of the Guangdong Jingzi Hall well underway, workers at the site have given up drinking, smoking and chewing betel nut during this time and have remained steadfast in following Master Jin Yin's footsteps. No matter what difficulties or setbacks you encounter, I can only strive forward. There is no time for me to stop and wait for you, so you must all follow close and keep up. Volunteer Tian Weijun said her five-year-old son was even able to resist the temptations of a banquet during the new year. He actually began a vegetarian diet last July. He no longer eats braised pork rice. Why? <laughs> Meanwhile, at the blessing ceremony in Shenzhen, local residents follow behind a long line of volunteers, symbolic of the aspiration to join Tsuji's ranks. Tsuji care recipient Mei Hui Bing says being able to get a job after his illness has left him very content. I am very content. I am happy every second of my life. That year, from surgery to the ICU, I was in the hospital for 15 days. Three Catholic nuns from the Sisters of St. Anne joined participants in prayer here at City's Blessing Ceremony in Montreal, Canada. Seeing this today, is, I'm very touched. I'm very touched for all the good work that you're doing in the world and the, the, uh, the aid that you're bringing, the hope, the love, the simplicity that the person in need is greater than you. It's, uh, I'm very touched about that. City helped to reconstruct three schools of the Sisters of St. Anne in Haiti. Apart from providing hardware, volunteers also provided humanistic care to the students. City's gesture deeply moved these Catholic nuns who are taking part in the event for the first time. I think I was most touched by the unity um, that we prayed for and that, um, and that is really at the, at, 
the desire of all of our hearts uh, will bring about this unity and harmony in our world. And so I'm very grateful to have been here today. Yeah. Members of the Suchi Foundation not only give things like blankets and things, but they suffer with the people. And I think that comes across in all the help that they gave. Accepting the New Year's gifts from Tsuji, participants come together to wish for a peaceful year ahead. Today, in the first of our feature reports on Taiwan's ecological wonders, we take you for an in-depth look into the Formosan cypress. Although the Formosan cypress used to cover much of Taiwan, today the remaining oak growth is found mostly within the Qilan Forest Recreation Area, a 45,000 hectare park located in Yilan County. With its oak growth forest of 600 to 1,200 years old, currently Taiwan is applying for the recreation area to be listed as a World Heritage Site. What makes the location so unique and special? We find out more in our next report. Of 1977, two space in 1977, the U.S. launched the Space Pro Voyager 1 to explore the outer solar system. On board was a record with the sounds of Earth and 117 photos, including this photo by the American photographer Ansel Adams. In Taiwan, another photographer bent on recording the miracle of nature is Lai Chun Biao. The Red Formosan Cypress plays an incredibly important role in Taiwan's mountain terrain, and its contribution to the protection of the overall ecology cannot be overstated. Known for his work in the conservation movement, Lai Chun Biao has long championed the cause of the Red Formosan Cypress and its close cousin, the Taiwan Cypress. We are here on Route 100 in the Qilan Forest Recreation Area, and here we see a Taiwan Cypress, one of the biggest in the area. The diameter of its trunk is close to one meter, and we estimate that the tree is 600 years old. Such large cypresses are not only unique to Taiwan, but currently almost exclusively found in Qilan. A survey by the Forest Bureau showed that following the expansion of the logging industry during the Japanese colonial era, much of the Taiwan cypresses were logged out and today, only in Qilan can we see these majestic trees that used to cover much of Taiwan. Here in Qilan, a 45,000 hectare national park has been set up. At its heart is a 20,000 hectare cypress forest. This area is currently being presented as a candidate for recognition as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The trees here are anywhere from 600 to 1,200 years old. This area meets all the common criteria for World Heritage Sites, especially since it is one of the largest remaining areas of old growth forest in the world. Worldwide, we find six varieties of the cypress. The Red Formosan Cypress can only be found in Taiwan, and the Taiwan Cypress, which is a variant of the Red Cypress, can only be found in the country as well. They represent an important snapshot of how species migrated in the period during the end of the Ice Age and are an important part of our world's heritage. During the end of Ice Age, the cypress migrated from northern China to Taiwan and today stands as a symbol of ecological biodiversity. Today, the cypress forest found in Yilan's Qilan Mountain is protected and those wishing to visit the mountain need to apply for a special permit. Currently, ecological restoration is being done on the mountain with the hope of improving the health and size of the forest for the sake of generations to come. In Zamboanga of the Philippines, to help students resume their studies as quickly as possible, the city's mayor and government officials joined city volunteers in assembling prefabricated classrooms, seeing how these loving people dedicate their time and effort on their behalf. At the classroom handover ceremony, students at the Talong Talong National High School expressed their thanks to song and handmade cards. <laughs> 
Next, yeah, next, yeah, next. We are three group working. One group who just do the assembly. Then after that, another group who will come to do the setup. Then another group who will do the finishing. To set up these prepared classrooms, city volunteers recruited cash for work participants to help with the building. Coming here, we learn of the desperate needs of these kids. We need to speed up the building process so that they can use the classrooms as quickly as possible. The mayor of Zamboanga City happily put on a city logo on a classroom. Meanwhile, officials of Zamboanga's Department of Education were also there to help. Okay, to show also that we are in solidarity with you and to show our appreciation, the spirit of debt with Tuchi Foundation. Working in partnership, city volunteers, Zamboanga city government officials, and cash for work participants assembled prepared classrooms for the needy students. That children see someone from another country. They even could come from another faith tradition. Why are they putting up a classroom for us? I think that touches their hearts. Cherishing the gifts from Tsuji, these students give the classrooms a thorough cleaning and waxing. I mean, they see Chinese, Filipinos, uh, Muslim, Christian, you know, of all religion coming together, helping them. We hope that they'll, they'll open their minds. We have prayed hard until this very day, our wish was granted. To our Chuchi Foundation donors, other than the prefect classrooms, city volunteers also prepared school bags and blackboards as gifts. The children's song and handmade cards deeply touched the volunteers' hearts. Really, you get tired, but uh, looking at the smiles of everyone <laughs> makes it all worthwhile. I mean, they say that the most beautiful smile is the smile of your recipients. Uh, as long as they study hard, study hard, <laughs> and come to school every day, uh, then it's worthwhile. Representatives of the school gifted Suji volunteers with handmade models of their classrooms, symbolizing their gratitude to the NGO. That's an important lesson. You will not find that in books. You will not find that in the internet. I thank Tutsi Foundation for, for really showing the way. It's, it's really not about money. It's not about expensive gifts. It's about a caring heart who's willing to, to go and, and tell one kid who is forgotten, no, you are not forgotten. In fact, you are well loved. Thanks to the prefect classrooms and the volunteers' company, students in Zamboanga have regained the strength to face the challenges ahead. In Taiwan, city volunteers welcome into a new recycling station, the Liu Chuan Recycling Station in Taichung, was donated by kind hearted Wang Wanfa and Lin Mei Lan. Meanwhile, the Xixi Recycling Station in Kaohsiung was donated by Xu Li Hua. With the establishment of these two recycling stations, volunteers hope to attract more like minded people to safeguard our Mother Earth. <laughs> It's not yet 9 in the morning, but this Buddhist temple inside the recycling station is already filled with over 200 recycling volunteers welcoming new members to their ranks. It's hard to imagine 10 years ago there was only a shrimp fishing field on one side and an abandoned tariff factory on the other. I'm glad I decided to donate this land. It provides a place for everyone to come do recycling, as well as a place for seniors to go to. With much determination and effort, volunteers turn a killing ground into one for cultivating and creating blessings. I look forward to hearing about this story in the future. This establishment was 10 years in the making, and I hope 10 years from now, we will be bringing our children or grandchildren here to relive this moment. Residents line up to donate the contents of their bamboo coin banks and work towards creating many more years of recycling.
Meanwhile, in Taichung, Tsuji's Liu Chuan Recycling Station is celebrating its grand opening, and volunteers look forward to spreading Tsuji's environmental ideas further. We can use this opportunity to clean up this older community with this recycling center. Worried about a lease renewal on the recycling station on Minzu Road, three years ago, volunteers started looking for a new place. Shortly after, Tsuji volunteer Wang Wanfa and Lin Meilan donated this land to the Tsuji Foundation to use free of charge for 10 years. This is a recycling education center. This place not only helps to purify hearts and bring harmony to society, but can also further spread Tsuji's environmental message. Last September, Tsuji volunteers mobilized to construct today's Liu Chuan Recycling Station, and upon its completion, it can be said that the more people involved, the more power and blessings it will garner. Even the local borough head was filled with thanks and respect. This helps our borough to better protect our environment. I'm thankful to the Tsuji volunteers. It's great to have you in the community. The establishment of two new recycling centers not only gives community residents new places to sort recyclables, but also new cultivation grounds to gather other like-minded individuals. In the United States, after five years of waiting, the Tsuji Northern California chapter grants it's ready to start its long plan expansion. Recently, a groundbreaking ceremony was held to mark the occasion, and once the chapter grant has reopened to the public, volunteers hope to encourage even more local residents to join their ranks. After years of waiting, the Tsuji Northern California chapter grant is finally ready to begin its expansion. The groundbreaking ceremony was attended by more than 200 people, and a sign language performance of Fulfill My Dream moved many to tears. Many people thought that reconstructing the chapter grounds would be an easy task, but in fact, there were so many details to attend to. However, Tsuji's brothers and sisters have worked hand in hand to overcome all obstacles. Since 2009, Northern California Tsuji volunteers have been raising money to expand the Tsuji Northern California chapter ground, which currently occupies 4,300 square meters. In 2011, the city's planning bureau passed the project. Finally, in November of 2013, the working drawings were approved by the local building and construction authority. I think our job is to build a perfect home for Tsuji, a place for all Tsuji volunteers in Northern California. Finally, we are at this stage. We will try our best to finish all the tasks and tend to all the details. We are working very hard. San Jose is known as the capital of Silicon Valley. It is also the richest area in the United States. But there are still many people living on the fringes of society. In the near future, the Tsuji Northern California Chapter Grants will provide educational, medical and other types of services to members of the community. We go back to Taiwan at the end of the show. Central District Tima members held a free clinic at the Renan Homeless Social Welfare Foundation's Taichung branch to safeguard the health of those without roofs over their heads. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.